Okay, let's uh, talk about uh, box plots. In order to start talking about box plots, we have to refresh our memory on quartiles. And more specifically, we're going to be using the interquartile range. So we don't care so much about the rest of this stuff, but this one is important. We need to know our IQR when we're uh, dealing with box plots. Okay, so keep that in mind. The interquartile range is simply just Q3 minus Q1. So it's the difference between our third quartile and our first quartile. A box plot is basically a visual representation of your five number summary. So if you have your five number summary done, you pretty much have a box plot. All you got to do is draw it. Here's our definition of a box plot, sometimes called a box and whisker diagram or a box and whisker plot. And like I said before, it's just a graphical representation of that five number summary. However, there is um, a slight variation. Some technologies will draw a box plot and some will draw what's called a modified box plot. And the only difference between the two is a box plot will look a lot better than this, but will look something like this. Whereas a modified box plot oops, might look like this for the same set of data. And the difference is box plot just uses whiskers to uh, show the min. And over here, the max. Whereas a modified box plot does mins and maxes as long as they aren't outliers. So in this first graphical representation, this maximum value was an outlier. And now, instead of letting the whisker go all the way out to that, the whisker stops here at what we consider uh, the max that isn't an outlier. And then this is an outlier. Let's look at some examples. In order to construct a box plot, the first thing you need is your five number summary. And then we're just going to draw the box plot on the number line. OK, here's an example. Let's do our five number summary really quickly. You'll notice the numbers are already in order. So your minimum is just 19. And the maximum is 30. Our Q1, our first quartile is just the first 25. According to our formula, remember the formula that we have? L equals uh, K over 100 times N, right? So if we're looking for Q1, we're looking for the 25th percentile. So L is going to be 25 over 100 times n, uh, which in this case is 40. All right, so we're looking for 25% of 40, which is 10. Now, according to our decision tree, we have a whole number. And when we have a whole number, the, um, the kth percentile, the 25th percentile in this case that we're looking for, is halfway in between that one and the next one. So we go halfway in between the 10th and the 11th, and we get 22 points. Five. We can do the same thing for the 75th times 40. And that's going to equal 30. And again, we go halfway in between the 30th and 31st and take the average of those, which ends up just being 26 because it's the same number. And we don't want to forget our median. And our median is, is what cuts it in half. So if we cut it in half, here's the, the top 20, right? Uh, or sorry, the lower 20 and the top 20. So we're right in between uh, that one and that one. Again, again since they're the same, it's 24. OK, so if we were to create a box plot for uh, this set of numbers, and you'll have to excuse my drawing skills. But um, the, the left side of the box, the lower side of the box, is the lower quartile. 
or Q1. So that represents 22.5. And then the top of it represents the upper quartile. All right. The whisker would go out to the maximum. And this one would go out to the minimum. Now this is all supposed to be to scale. This this should be floating above a number line. So you know the distance between 19 and 22.5, which is three and a half, right, should be the same exact distance between these two, because that's also a distance of three and a half. And obviously mine isn't, right? So it's not drawn perfectly to scale. Um, but you get the idea. They should be, right? But this is because we're doing it by hand. And then the the, the little vertical line in here represents our median which is 24 which should be a little closer to that side right because it's one and a half up and then two right so there should be a bigger distance here than there so that is a box plot it's just simply a visual representation of your five number summary okay so uh, here's an example that uh, the author has obviously a different set of data Here's another example. This is uh, something that was done probably in Minitab or some program like that. And you can see that it just labels all of its bits and pieces. So uh, this is your Q1, Q3, right? Q2, which is the same thing as the median, min, max. Okay. Here's another example. Can you see that this data comes from something that is skewed data? Because you've got this max that's way up here and the rest of the data is all clumped down here. So if you were to uh, draw this data distribution it would probably look something like this. And so that is skewed to which side? Left or right? That is correct. That is skewed to the right. Good job. Okay, now, outliers and modified box plots. As I said before, there's two types of box plots, the regular box plot and the modified one. So uh, we're going to try and always do modified ones. Unless we're asked otherwise, just assume that if you're asked to do a box plot, you're supposed to do a modified box plot. And the only difference between the two is modified box plots take into account outliers, and they describe outliers on the graph. We've talked about outliers before. We know that outliers can have really big effects on our data. They influence the uh, the mean drastically, the median not so much. They influence the standard deviation drastically as well. They absolutely influence the the range. You know, if we're going to look at that kind of silly thing, uh, so it's always a good idea to know if we have outliers because they do have a large influence on some of our more important statistics like mean and standard deviation. So we designate something as being an outlier by the simple rule that it has to be more than one and a half times that IQR distance away from the box, the box part of the box plot. So if it's one and a half times your IQR above Q3 or one and a half times your IQR below Q1, all that means is if this is the box portion of your box plot, your IQR is this distance here. That's IQR because the interquartile range is the distance between Q3 and Q1. So whatever this distance is, let's say in this particular case, just to make the math easy, this is a distance of 10. You know, like the upper part was 50 and the lower part was 40. So our IQR is 10. So 1.5 times it is obviously 15. So now we go out here, we go 15 above it, which is 65, and we go down below it, 15 below it, which is 25, right, 40 minus 15. And if we have any data values, any values in our data set that are bigger than 65 or smaller than 25, we consider those outliers and we'll either use a dot or an asterisk sorry it's a 
crappy looking asterisk, but you get the idea. Uh, depending on the technology you use, you'll get different symbols. But you use those and then you normally label them. So let's say this is uh, like 67 and this one here is 71. And then maybe we only have one outlier down here and it's at uh, 22. And then what we do is our whiskers then stop at the smallest value that is not an outlier. So it would be the smallest value in our data set that is still greater than or equal to 25. So if we did have 25 in our data set, it would stop right at 25. So let's say this one is uh, 28. Uh, that's an 8. And same thing up here. We would take this all the way up and let's go ahead and take it to 65. All right? Greater than or equal to. That's our cutoff. Tie goes to the runner. It's in our data set if it's at 65. It's in our data set if it's at 25. So that's the 1.5 IQR. That's all it is to do a modified box plot. Okay, let's look at another simple set of data. This one comes from a set of data on bears. And these are weights of different bears that have been measured. And so in this case, our, our N, our sample size, is I believe 54. They've already been ordered for us so we can do our five number summary. So let's do them in order this time. Minimum, 26, that's easy, right, right there, okay. Q1, well remember our formula, L equals K over 100 times N. We're basically uh, finding the percentage of N. So for Q1, we're doing the 25th percentile, so 25 or 125 percent of N. So we do uh, 0.25 times 54, and we get 13.5. And so according to our decision tree, that's not a whole number, so we round up to 14. So we look for the 14th number. So we go over here and the 14th number is 86. Okay. The median, well the median is going to be 50% of 54, which is 27. And so with our decision tree, because it's a whole number, we go halfway between the 27th and the 28th. So over here, here's the 27th and the 28th. So we average those two, but since they're the same, we just get 150. You can see how when you get larger and larger uh, sets of numbers, the nuances between our formula and letting Excel and other things do it kind of even out because when they have the odd rounding, right? I mean, if we end up going between 27 and 28, and let's say their formula ends up choosing 27 or choosing 28, it still ends up being the same. And that's because we're getting a larger set of numbers, you're getting more repetition, you're also getting numbers that are closer together, so even if you're off by one, you know, if, if you pick the 24th and the uh, program picked the 25th, in this case there's a difference of four, which isn't that big for this set of data. Okay, so that's uh, our median, and then Q3, right, we do the same thing, we look for the 75th, which is 0.75 times 54 gives us 40.5 so we have to round up to 41 go over here the 41st data is 236 and then our max is well according to this our max is 514 But we got to check for outliers, right? So what is IQR? IQR is Q3 minus Q1. In this case, 236 minus 86, which is 150. Then we do 1.5 times IQR, which equals 1.5 times 150, which equals 225. So we can draw the box. Remember, this is supposed to be on a number line, so we can try and draw it to scale, but you know, I'm not Picasso. 
So Q1, 86, Q2, sorry, Q3, 236, Q2, 150, so that's right about there. I mean, it's pretty close to the middle. And um, it's just a huge coincidence that your median here was the same thing as our IQR. Just a huge coincidence. Okay, um, we're going up and down 225, right? Our cutoff for outliers is up here at plus 225 from the top of the box, right? So that's going to be, what is that, uh, 461. So we can already see that's an outlier. If we go down 225, we're going to be in the negative numbers. <clears throat> and since these numbers represent weights of bears, you can't have a bear that weighs negative pounds or kilograms or whatever these measurements are. So we know that this whisker is just going to go to the minimum, which is 26, which it must have been kilograms, because otherwise that would be a teeny tiny bear. And then the maximum, or the top whisker is just going to go to the largest value that isn't an outlier. So it has to be 461 or less. And if we look at our data set, it's the next, right, the next biggest one, 446. And then we should have a little a dot or an asterisk or something to show that there was a 514 as an outlier. So if you're asked to do the five number summary, go ahead and use the min and max from the actual set of data. If you want, you can do the min and the max that would actually be the whiskers. That's fine. I will accept either. Most textbooks are going to use min and max of the data set. Let's look at the rest of this. Talk about how some of them do it properly and some of them don't. Um, special symbols, I mentioned that. Here's an example of a modified box plot that you can get from, again, I think this is probably a mini tab. And then I took a set of data and went online into our um, stat crunch. And this was the modified box plot that came from that set of data. You can see that it has one little outlier here. Okay. So it's a pretty simple concept. You're still doing the same thing. You're just cutting off those whiskers before you get outliers. So that's uh, pretty much everything that we covered in this chapter.